as many of you know, this is our centennial year. God has blessed our congregation for 100 years. We've had uh, some events to celebrate that already, and you see the flags on the wall. We are putting those up throughout the year representing the countries where people in our church have come from or where they were born. We uh, had a, a, a Sunday a few weeks back where we sang uh, songs that the church has used over the last century. And today we want to introduce uh, another song to you. One of the ideas that the Centennial Committee uh, came up with about a year ago was that uh, we should have somebody write a special song to commemorate this, this time in our church's life. We all thought that was a great idea. We thought, well, who, who could do this? Well, the... Uh, the obvious choice for us was Jerry Jacoby, who uh, grew up in this church and uh, has been here on many occasions. Uh, we all uh, miss his folks, Steve and Jerry, uh, who are with the Lord. And uh, so Jerry graciously agreed to do that. Some of you may have heard him through his ministry at our Portage Lake Covenant Bible Camp. He's a gifted musician. And so we asked him to do this. And, and the funding for this uh, song came from the memorial funds of our dear brother Houston Prawl, who passed away uh, just a little over a year ago. And uh, so we can both uh, celebrate our past and remember Houston and, uh, and enjoy the good things that God is continuing to give us. So we're going to ask Jerry and his wife Michaela to come up, and they're going to sing it and invite us uh, to sing it with them. So uh, let's welcome Jerry and Michaela. Fear not, 
you are faithful and have always been our stay. The next verse is about coffee hour. Isn't that, doesn't that seem appropriate? Because this church, I will tell you, more than any church I've ever been in, knows how to fellowship. And I remember a time when my dad, he worked for Michigan Consolidated, his, he was laid off for a long time. And somebody from this church gave him a, a, a job that that person didn't really need to have filled. He just employed my dad. That kind of love is something that is, has been very indicative of this church. So it is written, we your people will convey your love and grace, joy and laughter, sweet communion, filling hearts within this place. Tis your spirit overflowing, ever constant through the years, gently healing, lifting burdens, warming hearts and drying tears. And the last verse is about the most important thing, the major that you continue to center on. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I learned it here. It is written, just one gospel has the power to cancel sin. Trusting in our risen Savior, this our refuge, only Him. Keep us always near you, Jesus, rugged cross and empty tomb. You have called us, you have freed us, and we live our lives in you. Now there's a tradition that our Catholic brothers and sisters have that I think is a really good one. I know you've probably all been, like I have, occasionally in a Catholic church, you've attended a Mass, and you've seen that, first of all, they have somebody come up and read from the Old Testament, then somebody reads from Paul's letters, and then they read something from the Gospel. And at that point, this is a beautiful thing, they all stand. It's kind of like when Solomon dedicated the Temple in the Old Testament. All the people of Israel were before him in Jerusalem, they all stood for hours, and Solomon got on his knees in front of the altar. It's a beautiful thing. I would ask you, if you wouldn't mind, to stand when we get to the fourth verse. Michaela's going to have an introduction and then an interlude between each, each verse. So the interlude between the third and fourth verse are really fast. So you, it, it is really fast. So you'll have to stand quickly at that point. We'll stand because it's the gospel of Jesus Christ on that fourth verse. I'll sing the first verse, and as you feel comfortable with the melody, please join in. Here it is. It is written. Oh, 